When we become conscious of the Spirit of God in us, now whatever we face on a daily basis, we understand where to go to. We understand that the Spirit of God is guiding us in whatever circumstance that we're in. Whatever it is, marriage, finances, whatever it is, uh, a sickness, we understand that the Spirit of God is there and we begin to tap into that Spirit so that we can move forward in what God wants for us and not what the devil is trying to do to us. So we need to become more spirit-minded and less flesh-minded. The reason a lot of people get stuck in their desert or get stuck in their wilderness is because of the fact that they are more flesh-conscious than spirit-conscious. Let me kind of break this down, all right? When we're more flesh-conscious, we're more fearful of whether the check came in or didn't come in. When we're spirit-minded, whether the check comes in or doesn't come in, we understand that God is our provider. When we're flesh-conscious, if the man leaves out of our lives, all of a sudden we go into a state of depression or we don't know what we're going to do with ourselves. When we're spirit-conscious, when he leaves, we say, thank you, Lord, because I know that you have something better for me. The reason why is that a lot of times we are more flesh-conscious then we are spirit conscious. Your day of overcoming can only happen when you begin to awaken to the reality that you are not the result of some cosmos. You're not the result because mommy and daddy hooked up. You are the result that God had a plan before the foundation of the earth and his plan was for you to live here on earth in 2016 and live in this particular state and this particular region for a time such as this so you can be able to do his will for his glory. So I need to become aware of the spirit of God in me. I need to walk around with the Spirit of God in mind. The third thing we need to understand is that the Holy Spirit is our witness. Why is this important? This is very important because whenever a an event happens and you need to corroborate that event that happened. In other words, if there's somebody who's saying, no, that didn't happen, no, this happened, or some other story comes up, or whatever it may be, or somebody's accusing you of something that you did not do, a witness is key in a trial because a witness can, can, when you have a witness, all of a sudden, everything changes. Because you have somebody to corroborate your story. And so a witness gives a testimony of an event that has happened. Something occurs in our spirit when we accept Jesus Lord as our Savior. Every time the enemy uses your thoughts, your desires, your passions to bring you back to the old life, you need the witness of the Holy Spirit testifying that you are a son, that you are a daughter of the Most High King. Every time the enemy comes to accuse you and condemn you, you need a witness that speaks to your spirit and says, no, she has been declared blameless by the blood of Jesus. She is no longer a slave to your thoughts. She is no longer a slave to your desires and your passions. He has been set free by Jesus and what he did on the cross. And that's why the Spirit of God steps into your spirit and begins to witness that reality. And for that to happen, we need to be connected with our inner man. And not so focused on what's going on on the exterior. Look at what it says in the MSG version, Romans chapter 15 and 17. Look at what it says. It says, God's spirit touches our spirits and confirms who we really are. In other words, Satan tries to lie about who we are or who we used to be. But the Holy Spirit confirms. Because what happens is that the devil puts thoughts in us 
so that we believe that we are not forgiven, so that we should live in shame and guilt. And we, we begin to fall into that trap. And, and we, we say to ourselves, well, I'm not going to church because look at what I was thinking about on Friday and look what I said this day and, and look what I, I'm not going to go to church. I'm not really, you know, I'm just a hypocrite. And the devil just start feeding you into that. So yes, you're a hypocrite. You look at what you did. Look at what you said. One day you're up and one day you're down. But that's when you be, need to begin to not connect to your soul. You need to begin to connect to your spirit. Because it is your spirit that connects with the Holy Spirit. And then the Holy Spirit can begin to witness to you and say, no, 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 no. Yes, it's true that maybe in the past you did this, that, and the third, and you were condemned. But now you have a counselor. Now you have an advocate in Jesus Christ. So every time you mess up, you come to that advocate through the Holy Spirit. And I reconfirm to you that you are not a slave. You are not what the devil says you are you are set free in Christ Jesus so it says here I love the message Bible it's, I'm not saying it's a, it's a great study Bible it's a great theological Bible or anything but it's just a Bible that really puts things into perspective it says we know who he is and we know who we are father and children in other words we know our identity number one and we know our relationship number two we know that he is our father we know that we are his children and we know that as children sometimes we mess up sometimes we disappoint our parents but at the end of the day my father does not stop being my father and my mother does not stop being my mother and it says and we know we are going to get what's coming to us an unbelievable inheritance see when Joshua was walking through the desert and seeing all these impossibilities and all the reasons why they were not going to be able to make it to the promised land and looked at their lack and looked at the fact that they were always hurt and they were always broke they never had enough in the desert let me tell you something that sometimes when you're in the desert you're not going to have enough but it is those moments and seasons of lacking that God drops down manna from the heaven you know what the word manna means something you don't even know what it is or where it came from that's exactly what it means sometimes God drops blessings from heavens and you don't even know how it got there or where it came from in in that moment that critical moment of lack and you begin to see his provision but sometimes the devil doesn't want you to see that he just wants you to see and what God yet hasn't done But Joshua was able to keep on moving because he knew he had an inheritance. He just kept on thinking, milk and honey, overflow when I get to the promised land. And we need to understand that there is a heaven and that there is a moment where Jesus is going to come for his church. And that there are promises that even here on earth he's going to fulfill in our lives but the devil is constantly getting us to try to think that we're still living in slavery but that's when the Holy Spirit comes and witnesses to us about an event that occurred when we accepted Jesus when you accept Jesus in your life there is an event that happens in your life and it happens in your spirit there is a regeneration that takes place in your spirit that's why when you receive him all of a sudden you feel something that just changes something shifts all of a sudden something in you comes alive it is your spirit that is being regenerated by the Spirit of God and some of us lose sight of that because we become more connected with our thoughts. We, come, we become more connected with our, our passions and all these other things going on around us. But this is why we need to become more aware of the spirit that is within us. 
And for some of you, the Holy Spirit has been trying to witness to your spirit, but because you've been so connected with your flesh, you haven't been able to hear the testimony of the Holy Spirit about you. I'm going to say that again. Some of us have been so connected to our flesh that we haven't been able to hear the testimony of the Holy Spirit about us. See here in Romans chapter 8 verse 14, it doesn't say, for those whose marriage is perfect are sons of God. For those whose finances are perfect are sons of God. For those who never struggled with depression are sons of God. For those whose reputation is intact are sons of God. It says, for those who have been led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. What this means is that regardless of what my bank account looks like, regardless of what my relationship status is like, regardless of what my feelings are and my struggles are, I am a son of God if I just let myself be carried and led by the Spirit of God. And the beautiful thing about it is that the Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth. It might not make sense at the time, it might seem unreasonable at the time, but the fact of the matter is that Jesus said that I will give you the Holy Spirit and He will lead you into all truth. Sometimes it might be in an uncomfortable place, but He still will lead me into all truth. It might be in a place I don't want to be, it might be a little dark, but He will lead me into all truth. It might be a place I don't want to be in, but he will lead me into all truth. I'm going to leave you with this final note. Because a lot of time, the enemy doesn't mind that we come to church. As long as we're not led by the Spirit. And this is where religious spirits attempt to substitute the Holy Spirit in order to lead us into a life where we have an appearance of living Christ-like, to have an appearance of, but no power. And the spirit of religion can creep on anybody. And it creeps on us whenever we lose that spirit of expectation and that spirit of hope and, and, and just we lose that that expectancy about us. The spirit of religion glorifies concepts and ideologies over a true encounter with God. See, we can know a lot about the Bible but not know the God of the Bible. We can be involved in a lot of different ministries and be involved in so many things in the church but not have a constant encounter. Do you know you got to have a constant encounter with the Holy Spirit? It's not just a one encounter deal. I don't know about you, but my phone is always like on 15 to 20 percent on any given moment. My wife is good at charging. As a matter of fact, she, I thought that, you know, she used to have an Android phone and I was like, oh, that's awesome. She's going to have an iPhone. So now we're going to have more charges in the house. I thought I was going to have more charges in the house. It seems like I have less charges in my house now that she has the same phone and everybody else has the same Apple product or whatever. And the thing about it is she's real stingy with her charger. <laughs> her charge is always at 100 whenever I look. My charge is always at 15 to 20 percent maximum. But you know why? Every time I see it to go to 100, I'm cool. I see it go to 100, I'm like, okay, I don't need to charge it anymore. I'm good. My phone's charged. But what I fail to remember is the, the fact that as soon as I charge it, I'm using it for a million things. I'm checking the Bible, I'm checking my emails, I'm checking my text messages, I'm responding back, I'm writing down notes, I'm watching TV, I'm doing this, that, and the third. I'm doing a million things, so I'm sucking all the energy out and I'm not putting nothing into it. And I expect it to work. And once in a while, or not once in a while, all the time, 
you know it's about to die and, and, and you're just kind of like you're struggling looking for a charge or whatever and it's on that dreadful 1% and you get that one conversation call that's like a 15-20 minute conversation he's like look I gotta go man my phone's about to the Holy Spirit works in the same way we gotta be connected to it so we can be constantly charged up why some people they live based on an event that happened and, and their whole walk with God is based on that one you know I remember this conference I went to in 2008 and there was some amazing speakers and God just brought me a word that just impacted me and I was just like what happened now you've got to be constantly charged up with the Holy Spirit to see where the Holy Spirit is leading you next and see where, where the Holy Spirit is directing you because otherwise you'll, you'll live a life based on memories and God doesn't want you to live a life just based on a memory. He wants you to live a life of constant encounter with Him.